uh, we're going to blow your little Seattle minds. <laughs> Just kidding. Daisy, Sky, Lauren, Aaron, Alex. I thought to myself before we came up here, I said, will I ever be old enough to buy a beer? And then I realized life is inevitable. Life is inevitable. And you grow old no matter what. So yes, someday I will be old enough to buy a beer. And I can't wait for that goddamn day. <laughs> this song is called Church of Rock and Roll. I love my life.
Oh, my God. 
the best way I spend a lot of time wandering the country usually when I'm on stage I talk like this but that's not my real voice this is my real voice I'm just kidding this is my real voice and I'm going to tell you something that I'm going to tell you in my real voice so that you take me seriously. I've been wandering the country for a long time. Oh boy. I've been wandering the country. I've been very lost. Let me tell you something, a piece of advice from someone with some experience. The best way to not be lost is to change where you were going.
song is about my favorite color, black. This song is about my favorite flavor, chocolate. This song is about my favorite size, black. They asked 
Ashford bass player, Daisy, the only question that I remember the whole time we were there was they said to our bass player, they said, Daisy, that's his name. Daisy, why do they why does everybody call you the Johnny Depp killer? <laughs> the Johnny Depp killer, they said. For some reason people have been calling that calling him that his whole life. And Rolling Stone asked him, they said, what, did, what does that mean? Why do they say that? And Daisy looked at the interviewer for Rolling Stone, I can't remember his name, but he looked at him right in the eye and he said, because man, that's just what I do. <laughs> to share the stage with something like that. Normally we share the stage with a bunch of bullshit. I gotta be honest with you. Normally, 
I'm just not very into the shit that we're playing with. I don't know what if it's a problem with the music we make or if it's a problem with the management that we have or I don't know what it is, but normally we don't play with shit we like. It's just a bunch of bull bull fucking shit. Pardon my French, I don't I don't normally cuss. I have two kids, so I'm pretty cautious of that. I don't cuss. I'm just a little angry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. If you're under 18, I'm sorry. If you, if you guys noticed, I don't know if you were watching, but during the last song, did anybody notice Alex whispering something in my ear? Yes! He said, he said just keep playing as hard as you can. That's what it's all about, Alex. Listen, sometimes I come, I meet people, some of my friends, a lot of people, think that we're not a very good band. Best band in the world, baby! Best band Thank in the you, world! Man. Listen, but, but there's a lot of people that think we are a good band. The thing is, is that you need both sides to be to be happy, right, Alex? So I don't mind the people that think we suck. I just think they're wrong. This song's called Forever Together. I think we're the best band in the goddamn world. It doesn't matter to anyone but me. And that's all right. Because I'm going to heaven. When I go on to my son always tells me he wish I had a mama. It doesn't matter to anybody but me and my children. All I want out of life is for my kids to think that I'm awesome. And I think I'm doing a good job because my kids really think I'm awesome. My kids think you're awesome too! And this song is about my kids and I'm very, very happy to have kids. I'm very happy to have a wife. And I'm very happy to I'm very happy to have the best band in the world. When I go on to him, my son always tells me he wish he had a normal dad. Just like the nine to five, he don't understand what it is to be in a band and rock and roll and he don't understand, he don't understand, he don't understand, he don't understand. Before I go on tour, he always looks me in the eyes, he always makes me feel relaxed.
to look at me, but there's a constant battle raging inside. It's so hard to live these two lives. Hello, Dr. Jekyll. Hello, Alex. <laughs> we don't understand, we don't understand, we don't understand, we don't understand. At the end of the day, nothing really matters.
supposed to be here for the rest of the day. How the hell am I gonna handle it? Just go home. Go get a <laughs> How many people here? Listen, everybody. How many people here? Uh, Before we played a couple a couple songs ago, I told you guys that we uh, we did a, re a recent interview for Rolling Stone magazine. And uh, when when I did the interview, besides what I told you about Daisy, that was the only cool part about the whole interview. I've been reading this magazine my whole life. My dad turned me on to it when I was little. He loved the magazine. I loved the magazine until I did an interview for it. <laughs> And uh, they told me that I sound like a girl on the phone. They said that my voice sounded like a girl on the phone. I don't have anything against girls. Bullshit! I think girls are very, very, um, very sexy. <laughs> but I'm a man, and I want to sound like a man, okay? So I don't appreciate it when some rolling stone guy says uh, that we, I, that I sound like a girl, okay? I don't appreciate that. That hurts my feelings. I rushed to the, to the grocery store. I picked up the Rolling Stone magazine that I finally got to do this interview in. I've been reading the magazine my whole life. It was really exciting for me. I run to the, to the magazine. I, I pick it up and I read the article and it turns out they think we suck. <laughs> I don't know if Rolling Stone. I don't listen. I don't think. I don't think Rolling Stone thinks we suck. But I think whoever did the interview thinks we suck. And uh, I'm not going to give away his name, but he's a very, very. Yep. I got down on my knees in the middle of the grocery store and I just about cried. I was like, this is it. What is the point of anything? Because I try to do everything. I try to I try to play like, I try to be in an awesome band. I try to be really cool. I think I like cool stuff. Yeah. Why doesn't the cool people think that our band is cool? <laughs> and then I realized something. Losers. Who gives a fuck? And listen, listen. That was a very important time in my life because I realized I'm an adult. <laughs> and as an adult, we all need to learn to deal with some feedback sometimes. Yes. We all need to deal with some feedback.
cigarette for years. A man walks into a bar and he sits down at the bar stool and he orders a whiskey. He orders a whiskey ginger because that's what his dad used to order and that's all that he really knows. Give me a whiskey ginger, he says to the bartender at the other end of the bar. And the bartender says, coming right up. And the bartender at the other end of the bar pours the man a drink and he slides it down. And the man picks up the glass and he drinks it real fast. And he slams the empty glass down and he takes a puff of his six cigarettes. And he blows it out of his nose. Give me another one, he says to the bartender, and the bartender says, Your second glass of whiskey ginger is coming right up, sir. And he pours him a glass, his second glass, and he slides it down to the man, and the man drinks it just as fast as he drank the first one. And he slides it down, he says, fill it up for the third time. He drinks his three. He drinks his four. He drinks his five. He drinks his six. He's about 12 whiskeys into the night. And he's so, he's so effing drunk that he can barely sit on his stool straight anymore. And he's sitting on the bar and he's like this. He's so, he's so, listen to the, listen to the music, it's kind of drunk. He decides to get off his bar stool because he's feeling wasted and he tries to make his way to the door but he falls down in the middle of the box and everybody's laughing at him do it Alex Alex do it He makes his way to the other side of the bar and he goes out of the door and he stumbles into the street. He stumbles into the middle of the street on his hands and knees and he makes his way across the street and he gets to the other side. He comes to a big set of double doors and he kicks open the double doors. Bow! He kicks those motherfucking doors open, man. And he walks through those double doors walks through the double doors and he walks onto a big stage with a bunch of awesome lights and he goes to the center of the stage and he picks up the microphone in the center of the stage he picks it up nice and slow and he takes one more last draw of his cigarettes and he says Let's go to McDonald's, baby. I want to go to McDonald's. I'm hungry. Let's go to McDonald's. I'm hungry.
That song goes out, this set goes out to my, one of my good friends, Thomas. Thank you, buddy, I love you. Hope you're here, I'll see you in a minute.